On today's show, we're talking about the electronics going into our DIY printer. Welcome back to The First Layer. My name is Richard Cleveland. I'm your host here three times a week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. This show explores the world of 3D printing. If you're new to us, please go ahead down below there and hit that subscribe button. Also, ding that little bell so you get notified every time we upload a brand new episode or we're going live like we do every Saturday night at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. We've got a lot to cover today and we are into part two of our DIY build. If you watched part one, we'll link to that up here. Yes, we'll link to that up here, also in the description down below, where we talked about what design we were going to use. Now, this is based on a Prusa design. We've gone ahead and put together the actual frame. This is all done with 2040 extrusion uh, in black, a little bit more expensive. You can get it in silver for a little bit less. This is black powder coated. It's aluminum. Um, we've done all the measurements according to the Bear Prusa upgrade build that we showed you on the last episode um, from Open Builds, which is a great little resource for you, by the way, if you're trying to build your own 3D printer. Now, I will be putting a bill of materials uh, up as soon as we get to the end of our series here because we're still on the fence of to what we're going to use to uh, power this. We know that we're going with 12 volt because we're limited to 12 volts because of our bed. Now we're using a Mark 42 uh, bed, or, or this is a Mark 52 12 volt, sorry. Uh, this is the Mark 52 12 volt bed. We're going to use this uh, as our base for the printer and this particular base fits very well on our custom Y carriage bed. So we know that all of these holes line up great. So once we get that together, we'll show you how we're going to do that. We are going to use a BL touch on this build. Um, this is a knockoff of the genuine Prusa. This is not a genuine Prusa, but uh, it works, it does well, it's 12 volts, so we're going to use that. So this actually determined how we were going to power this machine. We couldn't get this in a 24 volt, uh, we could only get it in a 12 volt. So uh, we're going to use 12 volts. Now, getting on to how are we going to control this uh, particular machine. Now we can start by going, you know, the old route here. We're going to just move our camera over. We can start by using the old fashioned ramp stack with an Arduino uh, Mega on the bottom and use some uh, 4988 steppers, um, but those are noisy. And these boards aren't the most reliable. I've used these boards in the past and to be perfectly honest with you, I spend more time replacing the boards because they're just not that reliable anymore. And anybody buying this type of setup um, right now, I think you should Think about buying an all-in-one solution where you don't have to stack things and cause yourself problems. Now, that brings me to the next boards. Um, we've got a selection of MKS boards in front of me. First and foremost, we have the MKS Gen 1.4. This has been my go-to board for a long, long time because you can actually put stepper drivers on here, whatever stepper drivers you want. So if you wanted Trinamics, you could put Trinamic steppers on here and make your 3D printer a lot quieter. And that's what we're going to do with this printer is we are going to put stepper drivers on, uh, Trinamic stepper, stepper drivers. We're not exactly sure which ones we're going to use yet, whether we're going to use the 2130s or the 2208s. Um, we're still on the fence about that, but uh, we will let you guys know what we're going to use on this build. Part of what we're trying to do is keep the cost down. Now, certainly we could go this route again, and that would be fairly inexpensive. But I found in my research that buying a board like this is an all-in-one solution and adding your steppers uh, comes out to about the same price as one of these with all the parts included. Now, 
The stepper drivers, of course, will go in here and we can adjust those to be 16 or by 16 steps, by 32 steps, whatever we want. Now, if we decided that we didn't want to go with um, a stepper driver separately, we wanted an all-in-one solution, we could go with uh, this board here, which is the MKS Base. I believe this is the, yes, this is the Base version 1.5. And um, it's a good board. It has the drivers already built into it. These, I believe, are 4988s that are on this board. So it's, again, it's like having this ramp stack, but in a nice, neat little package. And again, you can use these boards with 12 or 24 volts, um, which they are, are meant to be a all-in-one solution. They've got all the connectivity that you're ever going to need on them. You can plug in different types of displays. We're going to talk about displays in just a second. Um, and if you didn't want to have replaceable drivers, then this would be a, a good option for you. My biggest problem with this type of board is that if a driver blows, you have to replace the whole board. And if you're in, uh, if you're not as electronically savvy as some people are, and you hook this up wrong and blow a driver, then that's a, that's a bit of a cost for you. Now, the other one that we could go through is this one here, which is the MKS Gen L version 1.0. Uh, a nice little board. I've used it now a couple of times. I actually have one in my Creality Ender 3, and I really like this board. It's got enough connectivity for me. I can add uh, up to five steppers, um, which allows me to not only run my Z axis, I can do it on separate steppers, or I can have a secondary extruder. And I can do that the same thing on the Gen version 1.4 as well. This is just a little smaller, a little tidier. Um, it uses all of the same, pretty much all the same parts that you'll find on the Gen board. It's just a little smaller, and I think it'll fit better with our build. So if we go over here, we can see just uh, how big that board is going to be. So this roughly is about the same size as the um, board that you're going to find in a genuine Prusa i3. Now, of course, we're doing a Mark II. We're not doing a Mark III. Um, I think the Mark II is just fine. We're going to talk about hot ends uh, on our next episode as we get to that and we start to build out the hot end. Uh, but I do want to talk about displays now. So let's get these boards out of the way. Both of the displays I'm going to talk about today can be used um, with any particular one. Now, this is an old broken one that we have sitting around the shop here. Let's just get rid of that. <laughs> Bloopers! Um, this particular one is the 2008 um, RepRap Discount Smart Controller. This is typically what you're going to find on a Prusa. It has four lines of display, um, a rotary dial, which I just threw away because it was unsoldered. Um, this is an old broken one that we had that I just wanted to show you. It also has a reset button on it and uh, a number of other uh, things like a card slot as well. So you can pull a f put a full SD side size card in here um, instead of using the micros, which is kind of handy. Uh, this would mount onto the front of your 3D printer right down there um, with a casement that you can print off yourself as well. Now, the next one is probably one of my favorite boards or displays. I like this display because it's nice and big. Um, this is the 12864 or 12864 uh, RepRap full graphic display. Uh, so you get a little bit more real estate uh, for the information that you're using. Again, it does have that, that rotary dial. Um, it does have a speaker, and it's got that uh, nice little reset button on it as well. Now, it's got two uh, inputs on the back for your ribbon cables. With these types of displays and the MKS boards, you do have to use two ribbon cables to run them. And we'll show you how the ribbon cables work on an upcoming episode when we hook all this stuff up because you have to do something a little bit special with those cables in order to get them to work properly with your MKS board. So that's a look at the electronics that we're going to use. 
And now we're going to talk a little bit about um, some of the bearings uh, before we get into the motors. So the bearings on this particular unit, we can use two different types. We can use a standard type. And we'll just go back to desktop camera here. We can use a standard type of bearing, which these are fine. They've been around forever. They will go onto our, our base just fine. And they used to zip tie them. We don't zip tie them here. We, uh, we actually use a U-bolt or some other method, making a little casement for them to slide into. Um, you can certainly do that. Or, my preferred one is the block bearing. Because the block bearings, you can just put right in there. You don't have to zip tie. They're secure by using bolts on the back. So the bolts will go right through and thread right into this block. Uh, and they do line up with all the holes that you'll see here on the base that we're using. Now again, like I said, this base lines up beautifully with this Mark 4 52 bed. 12 volt. And uh, I think we're in good shape. So that's the bearings we're going to use. We're going to use the block ones. Now, I will have to grease these, of course. Uh, and I'll use lithium grease to, to do so. We'll show you how I adjust these when we go and put into the uh, frame of the machine the actual um, smooth rods that we're going to use. And we will be using 8 millimeter smooth rod on this particular unit. Now, you can see that we've got some motors already mounted. You'll see that on the front here, let me see if I can pull this into frame for you guys so I can just quickly show it to you. Move those out of the way. And let's see if we can get this in frame a little bit. There we go. There we go. So you can see here, we're using a smaller um, stepper motor than the, than the original size that we had on here. This stepper motor is a 34 millimeter stepper motor, whereas this is a 40 millimeter stepper motor. Now we are going to use the 40 millimeter both on the Y, the X, and the extruder, uh, just because they're a little bit beefier. But by having the pancake motors, we have a little bit more travel up and down on our Z axis, which is what we want because this bed sits fairly close to the frame. You can see here on the front of the frame, it's a little out of focus, but that's okay. You can see that we've started to utilize um, the 3D printed parts that we printed for, for this particular unit. Um, there's a lot that went into this. Where you're going to run into um, issues in terms of the finance of this, and I will be putting prices of what we paid for everything, retail cost of everything, on in our bill of materials when we get to that point. Um, this, we've used uh, brackets and of course, We've used uh, quite a few of the uh, anodized aluminum uh, screws on this. They're all machine screws. We tried to make this thing look as, as black as possible. We're trying to go with that black theme uh, as much as, a, as we can. We are going to be using a removable base on this. We're going to use the, oh, let's put that right. We're going to use Spool 3D's removable, flexible, spring steel base which has PEI on both sides. Now I'm not a big fan of PEI. I never really have been um, but we are going to use it for this and uh, if worse comes to worse we'll just put a piece of bill tack on it or replace it with a piece of glass. But the, ba the bed is magnetic so we're good to go there. Now I think that pretty much covers everything that we're going to talk about on today's episode. In the next episode, we're going to build this out a little bit more. We're going to show you what we've done by putting in the rails. Uh, we'll start to get the X um, and the and the extruder assembly all built. Uh, we are going to go with a V6 hot end uh, from E3D. I think that's the best option just because the whole um, extrusion and hot end mount is all based on that V6. So we are going to use that one in this build. And then by that time, we should have a good idea of what the costs will be on most of our, our pieces. And then we'll start to put up that bill of material for you guys. So until next time, I want to thank Brian, who's behind the board today. There he is. And I uh, also want to thank Jess, who couldn't make it in today because she's a little stuck. They had a bit of a snowstorm where she's at. So she has to drive into Calgary. But... Brian came and pitched in today, so that's great. 
And uh, I want to thank Spool 3D, who's uh, helping us out with all of the materials that we need. Now, we are paying for these materials, um, so it's they're not free. This printer, we'll, uh, we'll do some testing on it as well. Spool 3D has everything that you need from parts, accessories, and everything that you need uh, to build your own 3D printer, as well as 3D printers and uh, filaments as well. So check them out today at Spool 3D. Print it right. Print it with Spool3D.ca. Now, this Saturday, Brian and I are back together, the dynamic duo, and I uh, don't know what we're talking about, but join us on 7 o'clock Mountain Standard Time, 7 p.m. in the evening. Grab yourself a drink. Come sit down. Ask your questions because we're going to be talking about your questions, pretty much. We're going to answer them, and uh, maybe we'll dive into a little bit more about what we're doing with this in terms of how we're going to set up the firmware. So we'll talk a little bit about that maybe on Saturday as well. And we'll do a full episode on the firmware for this machine as well. So until next time, my friends, remember that if you're brand new here, hit that subscribe button. Hit that little bell so you get notified every time that we do something. And the first layer is always your foundation to a great print.